Hello, students. In this session, we will look at the liver. The liver is the largest gland of the human body. It sits mainly in the right upper part of the abdominal cavity, just below the diaphragm. In this illustration, you can see the anterior part of the right and left lobes of the liver. Both lobes are separated by a thin fold of peritoneum called the falciform ligament, this ligament attaches the liver to the anterior abdominal wall in the diaphragm. Just below the diaphragm in the right lobe of the liver lies a small but important potential space called the subphrenic space. The liver shows two notches. First is the notch for the ligamentum teres, also called the interlobar notch. Second is the cystic notch. It often corresponds to the fundus of the gallbladder. Now looking below the inferior border of the liver, from left to right, we can see three important structures lying in relation to it. The stomach, the transverse colon, and the greater omentum. This image shows the diaphragmatic surface of the liver. Most of the surface is smooth and covered with peritoneum, facing superiorly and anteriorly. But on the right, there is a rough, bare area without peritoneum that faces posteriorly. This bare area is bounded by the superior and inferior layers of the coronary ligament and the right triangular ligament, while on the left lobe, you can also see the left triangular ligament. In the left part of the bare area lies a deep sulcus containing the partially removed inferior vena cava, and nearby the openings of the hepatic veins are visible. Between the groove for the inferior vena cava and the fissure for the ligamentum venosum above the porta hepatis lies the caudate lobe with the fissure for the ligamentum venosum situated just to its left. This image shows the visceral or inferior surface of the liver. The gallbladder lies in its fossa while the ligamentum teres hepatis occupies the fissure for the ligamentum teres, an embryological remnant of the left umbilical vein. At the porta hepatis, you can see the portal vein, the proper hepatic artery, and the right and left hepatic ducts entering and leaving the liver. Between the gallbladder fossa and the fissure for the ligamentum teres lies the quadrate lobe. On the visceral surface of the right lobe, there is an impression made by the right kidney, and above this impression is the bare area of the liver. This illustration shows the porta hepatis of the liver. Blood reaches this area mainly through the right and left proper hepatic arteries, which arise from the common hepatic artery, itself a branch of the celiac trunk. The cystic artery supplying the gallbladder branches off from the right proper hepatic artery. You can also see the portal vein dividing here into its right and left branches. Bile ducts are also formed in this region. The right and left hepatic ducts join to form the common hepatic duct, and then the cystic duct from the gallbladder joins the common hepatic duct to form the bile duct. This image shows the abdominal and visceral relations of the liver as seen from the posterior abdominal wall. At the top, you can see the bare area of the liver and the large inferior vena cava running alongside it. The formation of the portal vein is also clearly visible here, where the superior mesenteric vein joins the splenic vein. Moving upward, Notice the celiac trunk and its major branches, the splenic artery and the common hepatic artery. We can also see the cut ends of the abdominal aorta and the inferior vena cava. In front of these structures lie the bile duct and the duodenum, the posterior surface of the stomach and the lesser omentum are also visible, along with the cut end of the pancreas. Altogether, this view helps us appreciate how closely the liver is related to the surrounding abdominal organs and vessels.